Our second model for analyzing financial ratios is Altman set score. Edward Altman set score model is a measure of financial distress that predicts a company's possible bankruptcy within two years. It's important to note that it doesn't apply to financial companies. For a full reference, I recommend you look for Edward Altman's paper in which he describes the set score model. And in this paper is called Predicting Financial Distress of Companies, Revisiting the Set Score and the CETA Models. It is, uh, was published in the Journal of Banking and Finance uh, in July of 2000. So how is the set score calculated? Well, it is equal to 1.2 times x1 plus 1.4 times x2 plus 3.3 times x3 plus 0 0.6 times x4 plus 1 times x5. X1 is equal to current assets minus current liabilities divided by total assets. X2 is equal to the retained earnings divided by the total assets. X3 is equal to the earnings before interest and taxes or EBIT divided by total assets. X4 is equal to the market value of equity divided by the total liabilities. We already know what the book value of equity is, which is the shareholder's equity account, and the market value of equity is equal to the market value per share, which is the same as the stock price in the stock market, multiplied by the outstanding shares in their diluted form, and then dividing the result by 1000. X5 is equal to net sales divided by total assets. If the set score is less than 1.81, it can be concluded that the company is in a distress zone regarding its financial situation. If the set score is above 2.99, we can conclude that it is in a safe zone. And if it is in between these two numbers, we can conclude that it is in a gray zone. So now that we've um, calculated and um, studied all the formulas regarding set score, let's do it for Apple in our practical example in Excel. So again, we are doing um, a distress, financial distress analysis with the Alban set score for Apple. Data sources are the same as the one described in the section overview. Uh, we're doing it for three consecutive years and uh, well, all of them then are for Apple. So let's start with X1. X1 is equal to the current assets minus current liabilities divided by total assets. All of these accounts, as you can see, are found in the balance sheet. So here we have the current assets, the current liabilities, and the total assets. For X2, it is equal to retained earnings divided by total assets. So we just saw where total assets were, but retained earnings is right here and it's part of our shareholders equity. Now going into X3, X3 is equal to EBIT or earnings before interest and taxes divided by the total assets. Again, we are dividing by total assets, so I won't go into that account in the balance sheet, but we'll find the EBIT account in the income statement, which is right here. We calculated this one in our income statement lecture. Then we have X4. X4, which is the market value of equity divided by the total liabilities. So first, let's quickly go into the total liabilities, which are found in the balance sheet right here. Here they are. And then in the income statement, um, well, I just made this calculation in a new row, which is uh, the equity for value. It's also called market capitalization, and uh, which is the market value of equity. And like it was mentioned in the slides, you can calculate it by multiplying the market value per share, which is um, the share price in the stock market times the 
number of outstanding shares in their diluted form and then dividing the result by 1000 so made this new row because we're going to use um, this calculation in the future so it's easier and finally we have x5 which x5 is equal to net sales divided by total assets so net sales are found in the income statement they're actually our first account in the income statement and they're also called revenues once we have calculated all our x's from the first to the fifth uh, we can calculate the set score and uh, well as it was mentioned again in the slide it is equal to 1.2 times x1 plus 1.4 times x2 plus 3.3 .3 times x3 plus 0 0.6 times x4 plus 1 times x5 so that's the score and as we remember if it was higher than 2.99 it was considered in the safe zone so there was no financial distress or possibility of bankruptcy and it's the same for 2013 and even more for 2012.